You may have learned in your chemistry class that the standard atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere, which is about 101-300 pascals or 101.3 kilopascals. In AP Physics B, we round this number to 10 to the fifth pascals, and it can be convenient for you to memorize it. You probably also know that one atmosphere is 760 millimeter mercury or 76 centimeter mercury. Since pascals is really newtons per meter squared, this means normal atmospheric pressure provides 10 to the fifth newtons, 100,000 newtons of force per meter square of area. The area of my hand is about 0.013 meters squared. Pressure, by definition, is a force divided by area. So the force equals to pressure times the area. The pressure, the standard atmospheric pressure is 10 to the fifth pascals. The area of my hand is 0 0.013 meters squared. So this gives us 1300 newtons. So the atmosphere exerts 1300 newtons of force on my hand. That is 130 kilograms of air column above my hand pushing down on my hand. That's a lot. But why doesn't my hand get pushed down? Because there is also 1300 newtons of force pushing up on my hand. Remember that for a fluid at rest, the force from the fluid pressure is always perpendicular to the contact surface. So the force from the atmosphere on my hand goes down, sideways, and up. These forces cancel almost completely. So my hand does not get pushed around by the atmosphere at rest. I don't notice these forces because I'm so used to them. There are absolute pressure and the gauge pressure. The absolute pressure is the real pressure. So if it says pressure, it means absolute pressure. Gauge pressure is the absolute pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. We usually use P sub O, the PO, for atmospheric pressure. So gauge pressure is like the extra pressure above the atmospheric pressure. For example, if we inflate a tire to a gauge pressure of 250 kilopascals, it means the pressure inside the tire is 250 kilopascal more than the atmospheric pressure. If the atmospheric pressure is the standard value of 10 to the fifth pascals, then the absolute pressure inside the tires would be the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. See, the absolute pressure is the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. So this would equal to the gauge pressure is 250,000 pascals plus the atmospheric pressure. If a problem doesn't say anything, that means that we will use the standard atmospheric pressure for the atmospheric pressure. So it's 10 to the fifth pascals. We add these two together, we get 350,000 pascals. And that's the absolute pressure inside the tire. We may use gauge pressure instead of absolute pressure because sometimes what's important is the amount of extra pressure above the atmospheric pressure, as in the case of tire pressure.